So you're told back in 2019, you're insane. No advertiser will, will come to you if you do this. And you said, we don't care. We're going to keep going with or without advertisers. And you, by the way, were shoring up your fan base with subscribers, which was smart. So it was like, we're not going to be totally dependent on the advertisers because we know it's our side that always gets canceled. So we're going to say, and you guys put it out there. You say, hey, please support us just in case we get canceled. Like we need to continue bringing you that product. And by the way, I think you guys just announced like some big, big numbers on the subscriber base. Uh, 600,000. Is that what it is? Paying subscribers now? 600,000 paying subscribers. Uh, they make it possible, right? For us to ensure that we can go toe to toe with these advertisers. And Someone has to go toe to toe with these advertisers, right? There's a there's a complete uh, imbalance that happens where essentially only conservatives face the problem of advertiser walkouts. And I say walkouts because there's always kind of this cascading effect to it. You know, it's almost never does one advertiser leave you in a vacuum because when they virtue signal on their way out the door, when they like Harry's did to us, you know, put out these tweets that say our values are inexcusable. They're essentially telling all of your other advertisers that the only excusable thing to do would be to also drop. And so you wind up with two or three or four of these advertisers always leaving at the same time, which, you know, can do real economic damage to your business. Mm -hmm. It makes it an attack on the business. It makes it it's not merely an act of self-defense by the corporation who's trying to you know, protect themselves from the woke mob. It's also an, an offensive act against our business. And that's why, you know, I, I just don't think we can put up with it anymore. I think we have to be able to stand up against it. And so I essentially self to the pledge uh, that I would go toe to toe with the next company that did this to us. And I didn't. A couple years go by. There's another episode. Some advertisers walked out. I talked big again about what I was going to do. And I could tell the agencies didn't really believe me. They were tired of being on hearing me rant and rave. Uh, they did go push back on those advertisers and brought some of them back to the table, got them to delete some of their offensive tweets, and I sort of calmed down. But when the Harry's thing happened, I thought, you know, I'm essentially the boy who cried wolf here. If, if I don't actually act on this, then my threats mean nothing. I've got to put my money where my mouth is. And so I didn't even call our agency partners when Harry's attacked us publicly. Uh, I didn't call the agencies that represent Harry's. I didn't try to call Harry's directly. I just let it go and immediately got to work trying to start a razor company, oh, uh, which is, so I think, the only way that we can actually fight back. It's not boycotts. I didn't go tell my people that they needed to drop Harry's because how do you boycott uh, the, these institutions when all of the institutions are essentially infiltrated by the left today? You still need a razor. So whether you, you dump Harry's and you go over to Gillette, who puts out commercials essentially saying that masculinity is now toxic. Mm -hmm. you, you, in other words, you have no real options because through a strange uh, you know, confluence of social posturing, ESG, investing on the street, uh, and the left's enormous power to boycott and horrible HR laws that put all these companies essentially at the mercy of their, 20, their, their youngest and least experienced and least valuable employees. There's just nowhere to go. So I thought, well, the only real answer is to build an alternative. And we spent a year building Jeremy's Razors, which we announced four weeks ago to great fanfare. I think, you know, some, some say, Megan, I, I'm not one to brag, but Many people have told me the greatest commercial that they've ever seen. Stop it uh, and let, let the audience decide. We, uh, we have about a minute of the two-minute ad queued up. Listen to this. Do you remember when there were two genders and only one and a half of them had to shave their mustaches? Oh, hi. I'm Jeremy Boring, CEO and God King of The Daily Wire. Harry's Razors used to advertise on our shows. They're a great product, and we were happy to do it. That's before some peon who works for me went and said that boys are boys and girls are girls. And that was just too much for Harry's. They condemned our views. <laughs> views held by millions of Americans and virtually every human who's walked the planet until about 15 minutes ago as inexcusable. And they dropped their ads from our network because of what they called values misalignment. You're damn right our values are misaligned. And it's not just Harry's either. Gillette razors used to be the best a man could get. Then they decided that men are too toxic. Unless you're the kind of man who teaches his daughter to shave her beard. If that makes sense to you, keep buying Gillette. <laughs> but if you've had enough of the woke bullshit and you're tired of paying companies like Harry's and Gillette to hate you. <laughs> then buy my new razor instead. 
<laughs> took a he took a flamethrower. <laughs> everybody was running. I love that. And now you want people to buy Jeremy's razors. Jeremy's razors, last I check, has more Twitter followers than Gillette does, and they've been on Twitter since two thousand nine. You've been on for a month, not even. And how are the sales doing? Great. We're closing in on 60,000 Razor subscriptions at the moment, oh which we think is a pretty good first month. <laughs> so, you know what? I should have I should have remembered this because I was shaving. I wasn't shaving. I was shopping with my daughter and uh, we were talking about razors and we were in the toiletry aisle at CVS and she was showing me the different things and, and she picked up Daisy. And you know what, Jeremy? I have to tell you, like I'm a child of the 70s and 80s and I did nothing other than watch TV. My parents never told me to play outside. They were just like, watch more television. <laughs> so I did. And uh, uh, it came to me, like the ones that really like, almost as good as your ad. When you shave with Daisy, you go a little crazy. Oh, you want to show off your legs. All you want to show is your smooth, soft skin. You crazy Daisy shave. Almost as good as Jeremy's razors. Um, we're tired of putting up there. They're I bullshit. Pray. <laughs> High praise. Of course, my commercial is hilarious and fabulous and everyone will love it. It's not the best commercial ever made. It's just the best commercial made in a long time. I actually think it's resonating with people because 10 years ago, this was like every third commercial on TV was irreverent and sexy and funny. Uh, and now you watch the Super Bowl and like every ad gets described as important or uh. beautiful or, you know, so nobody wants important advertisements for consumer <laughs> goods. So we just made an old school commercial and the, re the response has been unbelievable. You know, the social media response, enormous. The video's gotten, I don't know, 15, 16 million uh, plays so far. And as I wow. said, we sold 60,000 razors. A, because I think people just respond to, oh, I remember when we could have fun with, I remember when we could have fun watching something. Yeah. And two, because they're just glad that we're punching somebody in the mouth for this what seems like never ending series of losses that we take in the culture. You know, but I, I like my, what my you're saying. Is, they, they insult sorry, you. Ahead. They insult you. They insult Knowles, who takes a beating in that ad. <laughs> you do not give him <laughs> the, the return high five. Left him hanging. But they insult you. They insult Knowles. They, they insult your audience. It's an attack right. not just on you, but on your audience to say that these are despicable values or whatever, however they phrased it. Bullshit. Like, that's not how, when that's did they not become how the vast majority values. of Americans feel. That's right. Every person working at Harry's who's above the age 30 had these exact same views in 2017. I mean, it's absurd to think that, you know, something this novel and brand new can instantaneously become the only acceptable point of view. <laughs>